Women Taking the Lead, episode 162. Make more bold requests. You know, what do you really have to lose by asking boldly for something that you really want when you have the conviction that it would be helpful for the other person instead of avoiding or, you know, doing something that is a smaller scale or someone less influential, get out of my comfort zone and just be bold. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentakingthelead.com to join the community and get the resources to support you on your leadership journey. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. Every child wants to be the hero of their own story. At JulesCustomBooks.com, your child plays the central role in every book, bringing joy and delight when they hear their name and those of their family and friends. Visit JulesCustomBooks.com to make your child the star of the show. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm here with Meredith Bell, who has been an entrepreneur since 1982, and she's an expert in helping companies develop the people side of their business. Meredith is co-founder and president of Performance Support Systems, a global software company based in Virginia. Meredith heads up marketing and sales for the company. Over the years, she served as an informal mentor and coach to the coaches, consultants, business owners, and human resource professionals who use their products. One of her strengths is creating strong, long-term relationships. Meredith and her business partners have worked together for 25 years, and many of their clients and resellers have done business with them for over 20 years. She understands what's required to build the loyalty and commitment that lead to repeat business and referrals. Meredith, I'm so excited to have you here. That was just a little bit of an intro for everyone. So do us a favor. Tell us more about you and your own humble beginnings. Oh, thank you, Jody, And I'm very excited to be with you as well. Um, If I go back to when I was growing up, I always wanted to be a teacher. That was how I saw myself. You know, one of my favorite things to do as a kid was play school and I would play the teacher and I'd get my younger siblings (laughs) and neighborhood kids to be in the classroom. Um, And so that's what I pursued. And I was a teacher for a few years, but then I discovered I, uh, I got kind of bored with the routine of, you know, teaching the same material. And so I got my master's and I moved into the school board office in an administrative type of role, which at the time, you know, that's perceived to be, you know, really moving ahead in the world of public education. The problem was um, there was a lot of politics and there was bureaucracy And I was given responsibility for certain things without the authority to really make them happen. So it was a combination of things that just caused me to say, I can't do this anymore. And I decided to just venture off on my own. And I had zero experience in business. I mean, you know, when you think about people that you know, decide to start their own businesses. I ha- I had never even worked for a, a I shouldn't say that part time. I had worked in restaurants, but I really didn't have any experience as a business owner. So I had to learn a lot of things. And what I ended up doing was starting a consulting and training company where I was teaching some of the same things I had taught to teachers when I was in that administrative role, uh, you know, interpersonal skills. And so what I ended up doing was discovering how to use some of my natural strengths, like speaking and teaching, to uh, speak to associations and other groups as a way of getting in front of potential clients. So it was quite a journey to go from, you know, being a classroom teacher to being an entrepreneur. (laughs) <laughs> that is a leap. That is definitely a leap. And it, you know, and it definitely takes that inner motivation, um, a, almost a calling, I would say. I mean, when you make that big of a transition, there's something that definitely causes you to make that leap. And there has to be a lot of confidence there that, you know, you're 
not even, how do I want to say this? Not even that you're a hundred percent sure you're going to make it, but you're a hundred percent sure that that's the direction yes. you're supposed to be going into. And that's confidence. I think sometimes people think confidence means that you're a hundred percent sure that you're going to be successful on the other side, but that's not exactly true. It's you're a hundred percent sure that you're going in the right direction. Right. And part of it, you know, for that kind of a change was also motivated by pain. You know, I was starting to have some physical symptoms of, uh, you know, upset stomachs and just dreading going into work, which had never been the case. I just have this very strong work ethic and always believe in giving 100%. But just the whole environment had changed with a bringing in of a new superintendent that it, it was just untenable for me. So it was a combination of really wanting to do something different, being my own boss, you know, going off on my own and escaping from those circumstances that were just, you know, detrimental to my mental and physical health. Yeah. And good for you for recognizing it and doing something about it. You know, so many people are stuck, miserable, in their jobs feeling like they don't have a choice. But, you know, once you realize you do, you have to do something about it. And Meredith, clearly, you know, you've had transitions, you've come a long way, you've had success in your life, and you clearly have gained confidence over time with everything that you've been doing. But I always love to level the playing field at this point <laughs> in our conversation. So if you could take us back to a time when you were playing small, and you may not have been aware of it at the time, it's usually in retrospect that it dawns on us you know, how we sold ourselves short, or we didn't realize how capable we were. So share with us the story and the lessons you've learned. Okay. It was hard to come up with just one, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because with my background, um, you know, the way I was raised, you don't, you know, try to showcase yourself, you, you need to be you know, humble. And so going out and promoting my business, and also promoting my services and my pricing um, was something I really had to learn. And so I remember this one situation where one of the programs that I offered was in customer service. And I think I got this um, potential client as a result of a public speaking engagement that I had done. And they brought me in to say, okay, what can you do for us? And I gave them a proposal which included you know, my fee along with uh, some materials that I was a, a distributor for. And since this was a, I think it was a heating and air conditioning company where, you know, they were used to purchasing materials that they used in their business at a wholesale price. So they knew that as I was using these materials that I had a margin in there. And they just really pushed me um, and to be honest, they intimidated me about, you know, lowering my price. And I gave in and and did that. I didn't even put up a whimper, you know. <laughs> it was like, oh, I really want this business, even though it involved, you know, a pretty good drive. It was local, but it was a drive for me each time that I was going to go there because I was going to be conducting multiple sessions. And I did, um, you know, right on the spot. I didn't even say, let me think about it. I just wanted the business and I said yes quickly and they got what they wanted and I didn't get what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't take me very long to realize, you know, oh, I don't feel good about having done that, but I'd made the commitment and that's what I was going to do. Uh, you know, that was many, many years ago. And you know, if I were having a conversation with someone today, I would certainly not be um, quick to to lower price. Um, and the thing is, you touched on it, this whole confidence thing. I think that the whole way I would have presented this, I would have come across with greater confidence and certainty than I had at that time. And that, you know, conveys conviction about the value that I will be able to deliver. And I think the way that you come across has a lot to do with somebody, you know, asking you to, 
you know, lower your price or any other reaction they may have, whether it's trying to get more hours from you for the same price or, you know, work something to their benefit. But I think I've learned to ask questions more, to not be so quick to accommodate. And I think that that's really an important lesson in the context of playing small, because it goes back to a belief in yourself and a belief in the value that you're bringing. And if you have doubts about that, then you're going to find yourself stuck into playing small. Oh, Meredith, I, I'm like, I'm nearly breathless here because I'm like, oh my God, it's so true. You brought me back to my own first year in business. And I think this is something that's very common for people who are just starting out in business or in a new area of business where they haven't spent enough time really getting at the heart of what is the value that I bring? What are the benefits that anyone who works with me is going to see if they do the work. Because when we're really clear on that, when we really know what's available for our clients on the other side of working with us, we don't get as intimidated in those conversations and we don't price ourselves based on margins. I love how you said that because yes, a lot of business people out there, they're trying to run their businesses too. They're trying to get the best price, but it's up to us to, like you said, ask those questions, be curious, find out what's going on for them so that you can clearly articulate, here's the value and here's how I can solve that problem for you so that they can see that you're worth the price that you're quoting. Right. Oh, I love that. (laughs) Oh my God. So I know there are people who are listening who know they start getting squirmy in those sales conversations. Before you go into those conversations, remind yourself, you know, and read through the testimonials your clients have already given you so that you fortify yourself in having a powerful conversation, not just for yourself, but for the person you're going to be speaking with. Now, Meredith, share with us a time in your journey when you had a wake up call. I know for some people, they say it's like a light bulb went off in their head and other people say, oh, the universe had to keep sending me message after message. It was a slow awakening, but there's usually a moment where we're ready to take action. So if you could take us back to that moment and share with us the steps you took that led to your success. This is an interesting story with multiple parts, but I really think I need to include all of them. It won't take that long, but it's, um, I think it's instructive. It really was for me. The bottom line is I was, um, invited to speak to 900 entrepreneurs at a conference. So what I want to do is back up and, and say what, the various light bulbs that happened (laughs) to get me to that point. Um, I was a member for an organization called uh, Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle or GKIC for many years. And um, as a part of that, they had a special interest group, you might say, called the Information Marketing Association for people that sold information products. And one month I was reading their newsletter and I was struck by the fact that one of the topics being covered was something I know a lot about. And in addition to their monthly newsletter, they had a monthly interview series where they would, you know, record this and send out a CD to all the members. And I thought, you know, I really have some valuable information to share. And so one of the aha moments was ignoring the doubts that crept into my mind at the moment that I thought, oh, I wonder if I should um, approach Robert Scrobe, the fellow that's the president of the IMA, about this. And, you know, the doubts that went through my mind were, oh, you're not a big shot like some of these other people that are featured every month. And do you really think what you have to say is all that worthwhile? And I finally said, yeah, it is. (laughs) So (laughs) I shut up that inner critic. And I thought, okay, I'm going to take this action quickly before I start second guessing myself. And I just sent a quick email to Robert saying, I uh, just read the newsletter. I was struck by this topic. I think I've got some really good insights that would be valuable to the members and would like to suggest being a guest on your show uh, or on the, the monthly CD. So he wrote back and said, well, send me a proposal. That sounds interesting. 
So I did. I, I just put together some quick things that I really already had because it was knowledge, you know, that's a just kind of an automatic part of who I am and what I do. So I put it together, sent it to him, and he loved it. He said, let's do it, and we'll do it this month because I have an opening. And so that was really interesting. So I prepared for that. And it turns out he and Bill Glazer, the president of GKIC, were the co-hosts. And you know what's so funny, Jody? As soon as I got on this interview with them, Bill Glazer spoke up and he said, oh, and Meredith, I'm so glad you're on the call. Meredith is one of our favorite people. And I thought, <laughs> where did that come from? And it hit me that I had been really laying the groundwork for this interview for years because at the conferences, I would go up to Bill and talk to him and always made a point of finding something to give him positive feedback about in the conference. Because I've run events and I know how people can be so critical about the seats or the temperature or whatever. So I always looked for genuine things to give him positive feedback about. And then I also wrote a note afterwards. And one of the times that I gave him the verbal feedback, he said, gosh, could you call me every day and just call me and say these <laughs> positive things to me? Because I realized this is another, you know, related aha, how no matter how successful someone gets in terms of, you know, financial success or position, we all as human beings have a need to be affirmed and to have our value recognized and appreciated. And there was a time I sent a note to him thanking him for, um, you know, the conference, and he printed my note in the newsletter. Uh, who knows why? I guess it's just because of, you know, the detail I had, again, gone into about what I valued so much about that. So the point is, I when he made that statement, that was an aha on this interview. How do I get to be one of his favorite people? Well, it isn't because I set out to do that, you see. It was just a way of being to be positive and appreciative of someone. Oh, and, through, Meredith. and throughout that interview, he he really gave me positive feedback along the way um, about the value of what I was saying. At one point, he said, Meredith, I've never heard anybody else explain it so well. So the the additional aha there was, oh, my gosh, I'm, you know, I'm sitting on this really valuable content that because I think it and use it every day, I don't give myself credit for how important it is to other people. So after that call, I thought, hmm, uh, Bill is putting together a conference this fall. I sent him a note and said, do you think this would be something that would be of value to the attendees at the conference? And um, he said, yes, let's set up a call and talk about that. And so he decided that it was important enough that it should be at a general session. So that's how I got to be in front of 900 entrepreneurs at this <laughs> one conference. You know, one of the ahas, again, for me, like I said, this story has so many, but one of them is ask. You know, you can't sit around and wait for people to discover you. You have to make these bold requests that feel bold to you, but actually, you know, the other person may very well be open to it. Um, they just don't even know you have this, that you're sitting on this. And so I just think that that was important for me. And it has served as an anchor for so many other things that I've done in terms of a willingness to ask. The worst they will do is say no. But if I don't ask, then I know for sure it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I want to I, I want to underline that, especially for you, the women and you know who you are who are listening right now and know you've been lacking confidence. You have more value than you give yourself credit for and have not been asking. <laughs> so I want all of you to take on doing a big ask in the next week. And just put it out there and just know that the worst that they can do is say no. 
right? That's the worst that can happen. Meredith, there were so many insights into that story and probably more that you didn't even point out, but I love, I want to get to the heart of a, a couple of the things that you said where you were just being yourself, interacting with people in a way that felt good for you. You were bringing your natural superpowers to the core, those things that you naturally do, you don't think anything of, you probably didn't give much credence to before somebody, especially Bill, pointed out to you how great it was, but you go out of your way to point out the great things that people are doing and what they're contributing. And I would say to everyone, even if that's not your superpower, try to incorporate that in your day, to go out of your way to let somebody know that they're doing a good job, that what they've done has been useful or helpful to you, because you're absolutely right, Meredith. It doesn't matter how big you get, you're still a human being and your inner critic is still playing around with you. Um, The other thing I also wanna point out too, and, and for those of you who are listening, If you got what you wanted today, it would scare the crap out of you. (laughs) You know, when your dreams come true, you have excitement and then your inner critic goes, do you really think you're worth it? Do you really think you're capable of this? That's a natural thing that's going to happen. The work is to prepare for that moment so that you can get past it because we all feel self-doubt when opportunities come our way. But if we're ready for it, if we know what that is, and it's just our inner critic, we can overcome it and then do what we're meant to do. Meredith, thank you so much for sharing that story. I love it. Is, would you like to sum it up or, or give the high point that you want the listeners to walk away with? I would say always have this, um, your radar up for opportunities where you can um, contribute in some way, uh, whether it is, you know, being a guest on a show or writing an article or whatever it is that you might be able to do that could, um, contribute to someone else in some way with no thought of where, what am I going to get out of this? Um, but if you just keep giving, um, it, it just all, you know, will come back to you. But I, again, you have to not just give, 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 but also think about um, what is it I would like to ask for if there is a specific situation, because it may be very appropriate to ask. And, and the part of asking for me is when I know that if I ask, could I contribute this? Could I do this? Um, it's with the spirit of wanting to improve or offer value to that person or that situation. And so I think when your motives and your heart is in the right place, people sense that sincerity. Absolutely. And just the way you would, you would propose the opportunity is, I think I can help. And in your story, you said that you would, you said to Bill and to this other gentleman, I think I can help you. Mm -hmm. I think I can add some value, you know, and, and that's a great way to look at it. Always ask from a place of, how can you contribute and give value? Because people do pick up on it, the subtleties. They may not consciously be looking for it, but they sense it and they'll react to it. Well, Meredith, this is a great segue because with all of your years in leadership and and helping other people develop their own leadership, I'm curious how you would describe your leadership style. Um, I think at the core is people sense that I genuinely care. It's not an act, you know, it's not a tactic or strategy. It's a way of being with them. And so when I, whether it's somebody I first, um, you know, in meeting or one of our resellers, you know, that I may be having a call with, and we really do have a number of folks that have worked with us for 20 years. It's like, you know, a friendship and they can count on me to ask questions to find out you know, how things are going. It's not trivial. And it's one reason, you know, Jody, I think you and I clicked so well in that very first conversation we had, because I love going 
you know, deeper into the things that matter. And so one of the things that I think makes me effective as a leader is really paying attention to what people are saying and not saying. So my listening skills have been really tuned over the years. And I ask questions that hopefully are helping the person, you know, think about some things that maybe they haven't thought about before. I'm not trying to dispense advice, you know, or tell them um, what I think they should do. I'm looking for ways that I can be of service to them and without them feeling like I've got some, you know, strings attached or some expectation that uh, spoken or unspoken that I'm hoping they'll do as a result. And I tend to be very collaborative and not authoritarian. I'm not one that enjoys trying to, you know, work from a position of power just because I have this title or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm much more like to get input from others because it enriches my own thinking and um, ends up helping us come up with a better solution. Mm -hmm. And I know for myself, I'm happy to follow somebody who has my best interests at heart and sees me as a leader and asks me, how do you want to contribute? So bringing all of those qualities together, you must have people flocking around you who are like, what can I do for you, Meredith? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it is so funny when I will have conversations, especially with new connections, let's say from LinkedIn, Mm-hmm. And I'll spend a good bit of the conversation asking questions about them and then, you know, offering to introduce them to somebody or or send them something that will be a useful resource for them. And it is funny how often at the end, for people that are really, you know, self-aware and givers themselves, they will say, gosh, you've been so helpful. What can I do for you? And that's never my motive for doing that. My you know, reason for going into the call is just to learn more about them and think about ways that I might be able to help them. Because I just believe that's so important in this world, that um, especially during this particular election year, you know, where there's so much um, negativity floating around, that the idea of bringing kindness, love, you know, positive energy, optimism to situations whenever possible is a way of enriching the lives of anyone you come into contact with. Mm-hmm. I I appreciate that. And the thought that just popped into my head is, yeah, and the year after an election year is a year of healing, <laughs> where we, we get back to those qualities and, and really reinforce them. So I love that you're, you're just always bringing that. And I have definitely gotten that from you. So Meredith, I, I want this next question to be all about you, though. What's one thing you're working on right now that you're really excited about? Well, it really kind of ties back to what we've been talking about. We've created an online coaching system uh, called Strong for Performance that has been getting some really good traction in some organizations. And I am so excited about the way the lives of the managers, you know, and leaders who are using it have been able to really improve how they communicate with others either people on their team or people that they work with. And I am, you know, that's really what I'm all about is helping people to become stronger, become more effective in their relationships with other people. That's the bottom line about what we do. And it's what gets me excited every day. And the stories that I hear now from people who are using our program, along with getting, you know, coaching from other people, either internally or externally in the organization, it really, in in many cases, it's transformative because they didn't know any better about how to interact with folks. You know, unfortunately, our schools... And our training in general does not help people with these communication skills. They learn how to do the technical aspects of their job, but then they get promoted and don't have a clue about what it really takes to motivate and inspire people to do their best work. And so that's what I am just on fire about. And just a quick example, this one manager was learning the skill of dialogue in our program, what does that look like? Where you, you know, ask someone else their opinion 
and then ask to understand why they have that opinion. And you're not just judging them quickly and trying to push your own opinion. It's a back and forth. And in the past, this woman had been a sort of impatient um, listener. She would rush people along. And in the case of this one person, she tended to think she was a complainer. And so she adopted this new way of interacting with the gal and came to ask questions and learn that there was a real issue there that she had not been aware of. And because she took the time to ask the questions and find out what was really going on, it um, it really opened her eyes to talking to other people on her team to learn more about this particular issue and then open up to what some options were that could really work. And it resulted in her making a totally different decision than she would have made in the past. And in this case, it, you know, reflected respect for others and it started building trust among the people on the team, you know, for each other, but also with her that didn't exist before. So that's the kind of thing. And, and, you know, there's more to it than that, but it just gives you a glimpse as to how people can change once they learn a new way that they can be. Mm, it's always those soft skills mm-hmm. <laughs> that yes. can tr- trip us up. And Meredith, who would you um, say this product is ideal for? Well, the people who actually use it are people that are like supervisors, managers, business owners. The people who purchase it would be um, consultants who work in, in organizations. So this might want to be, be one of the tools they'd use with clients, executive coaches, but also internally, it would be HR professionals, you know, talent development people, learning and development folks, people in charge of a leadership institute, you know, internally. So anyone that's really responsible or involved with the development of leaders. Mm -hmm. And I know you're going to give your contact information at the end, and I'm definitely going to have it in the show notes page. But if somebody's listening right now and they're like, oh, that's me, and I want to find out more about that product, where would they go to get that information? It's The website is strong for, and that's spelled out, F-O-R, performance.com, strongforperformance.com. Love it. All right. And on the flip side of things, Meredith, what is the biggest leadership or business challenge you are faced with right now? Well, it's sort of twofold. I really am working hard to develop some strategic alliances with uh, people who already have established clients in the areas we're looking to go into so that they see the value of our product as a supplement or complement to what they're already offering. So they would naturally want to promote ours in addition to what they're doing. And the other is uh, finding affiliates who um, are good at sales as well as really believe in our product. So um, they aren't necessarily mutually exclusive, but our goal is to get this out to more people so they can benefit more. Obviously any business wants to grow its revenues, But, you know, equal to that is the desire to help people become more effective in their communication skills, in the way they deal with challenges at work. And the beauty, of course, Jody, is that it carries over to their personal lives. So we see relationships at home improve as well as relationships at work. Mm -hmm. So that's the challenge is getting the word out in as big a way as possible, as quickly as possible. Yeah, I agree with you. It all comes back to, and the work you're doing is just building relationships, getting this in front of people, connecting with more people so that you can find the people who you can help and who can also help you getting that win-win going. And I've also heard those types of comments in some of the workshops I've led where I'm teaching soft skills. Like after a while, they'll come back and be like, oh, my husband or my wife thanks you (laughs) for for this. Like we had really, we've been having some really great conversations conversations. And it's absolutely true. And, you know, you don't contain your skills in one part of your life. It it ripples out into every part of your life. And Meredith, you know, er, oftentimes um, my listeners will reach out to me, the women who are listening and say, how is it even possible, you know, for your last guest to have be doing all of these things on her own, right? Sometimes there's this misperception that, you know, we're, we're doing this on our own. Like we're, we're just incredibly capable 
capable individuals who who go it alone. And it's not true. So if you could tell us about the people you have around you that make it possible for you to sustain and expand your current level of success. Great question. Well, as you mentioned in my intro, I have two business partners and we've worked together for 25 years and we have really different, um, you know, unique abilities and skill sets. I love the relationship building sign with marketing and sales. So one of my partners is very technically oriented, thank goodness. And so, you know, if I am recording something, she's the one that makes it into the production. She can do all the multimedia production. She manages our websites. I don't have to do that. I will give her content for it, but then she runs with it. And she manages the legal and financial aspects of our business. The other partner is the one that really was the visionary about our software products and worked with our software developers to actually create them. So, you know, the, and and I am able to, you know, give input to that based on my experience and provide some of the content, but he's the one that really designed them um, from a conceptual perspective. And so I really appreciate both of them. And over the years, we've become, you know, just so grateful for each other because we do each have such different gifts. Um, In addition to that, I just outsource certain tasks like voiceovers, for, you know, some of our videos where I just don't think my voice is the right one. We have found, we've used Fiverr.com with great success for those kinds of projects. Also, I uh, use a number of automation tools to manage social media so that, you know, I can set up tweets or I can set up LinkedIn posts or whatever so that they're done on a regular basis. And I'm not constantly being there to do that. And then the final um component, I guess, is um, looking for other experts um, who can accelerate my learning or cut my learning curve um, on a particular area. Like LinkedIn is my number one social media site. It's where, you know, I really find the business connections just form so much more easily and and quickly. So I um, have taken a course from John Nemo, And it's excellent. He has a book also called uh, LinkedIn Riches. And so I believe in, you know, investing in myself so that I can learn from others who've been there and save myself a lot of time. (laughs) And we all would love more time, (laughs) more free time, I should say. Now, Meredith, I'm going to do a quick leadership roundup. So tell us, what is one practice you have that helps to make you a better leader? Just um, listening, I think, listening deeply to people when they're talking. Mm -hmm. And what's something you do to help you develop your your listening skills? I monitor myself when I'm in a conversation. If I'm finding myself tempted to jump in too quickly, uh, interrupt, or come up with a solution, I will pause and... um, to try to think of a question that I might ask that will help me gain a better understanding and possibly elicit the answer from the person rather than me saying this or that. Mm -hmm. And what is one book that you would recommend to a woman to help her develop her leadership? I would, uh, this is my number one for both um, business development and personal development. It's called Straight Line Leadership. Um, by a fellow whose name I'll need to spell. It's Dusan, D-U-S as in Sam, A-N as in Nancy. And then his last name is Jukic, D-J-U-K-I-C-H. But you can just look up Straight Line Leadership. It's a phenomenal book. It's 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 a short, uh, short chapters, non-academic. Um, and the power of this book is that in each chapter, he's contrasting two ways of being or what he calls your inner stance. And the inner stances that you adopt determine how you operate in the world and what kinds of things you're going to attempt and what you're going to follow through on and learning to identify what he calls the necessary required actions. So just as a quick example, he contrasts in one chapter productivity versus busyness. And when you uh, mentioned in our, you know, 
earlier conversation about the busy part, you know, we have to really look closely as because so many of us are busy. But then what is, is it getting us the results we want? Are we doing really the right things? Another contrast is trying versus committing. So these just speak to me. I'm in my third reading of it. It's a profound book that I just, I, th I think would speak to any woman uh, or any person who is um, wanting to be successful in their business because it's very direct and some of the stories just uh, will resonate with you and cause you to think about, hmm, what am I doing in my own business that might be getting in my way of getting the results I want? Mm -hmm. And after our conversation, I promised you I'm moving it to the top of my queue because I think it'll be very helpful <laughs> with some of the things that I've been talking about recently. And Meredith, what advice would you give your younger self? You know, there are two things. One is have more fun. Um, be less serious and lighten up so that um, I don't put pressure on myself to be I won't say perfect, but you know, we do this, get it right. I've got to get it right the first time. Um, and instead replace that with just seeing it more of, is it, it's an experiment and a game, you know, I, I'm here to have fun and I'm a scientist collecting data as I go. And so I'm not making a judgment about myself. It's just information that's going to help me make adjustments along the way. Uh, so that's the first thing I would tell myself because I tend to be too serious. The other is to make more bold requests. Um, and this goes back to the playing small idea that, you know, what do you really have to lose by asking boldly for something that you really want when you have the conviction that it would be helpful for the other person instead of avoiding or, you know, doing something that is a smaller scale or someone less influential, get out of my comfort zone and just be bold. And Meredith, share with us a success quote or a mantra and why it has meaning for you. This quote is from the book, The Prosperous Coach, by uh, uh, co-authored by Steve Chandler and Rich Litvin. And Rich Litvin said this, and it's a quote that I have, in my mind before any conversation I have with anyone. How can I serve this person so powerfully that they never forget our conversation for the rest of their life? And the reason I love that quote is because it, it forces me to put the focus on them because it's not about dispensing advice or, you know, trying to guide them and tell them what to do. It's asking questions that get them to think in a way they that no one else has ever encouraged them to think before that's going to help them move forward in their lives. And I just think that's an awesome thing to do. Mm -hmm. And such a perspective that you can't help but fulfill on it. Well, the other thing for people that have, you know, um, anxiety around sales and having these sales conversations, it's, it's not about waiting your turn to talk about your product when your focus is on them. So you're more relaxed and calm and they sense it, they're attracted to having a conversation with you because they can tell you're really interested in them. It just makes a huge difference in the tone and the result of the call. Mm, absolutely. Well, lastly, Meredith, what is the best way for this community to connect with you? On LinkedIn and Twitter, um, my uh, ID is Meredith M, as in Mary Bell, B-E-L-L. -L. So those would be the best two places in social media. I am on Facebook too, but I spend more time on LinkedIn and Twitter. And then my email is Meredith, M-E-R-E-D-I-T-H, at ProStarCoach. Dot com. Okay, love it. And for those of you who are listening, you know you can find all the links and resources that Meredith shared in her episode at womentakingthelead.com. You can put Meredith in the search bar and her page will come right up. Meredith, thank you so much for taking the time to inspire and enlighten us. We are all better for having met you. Oh, thank you, Jody. It's been so much fun and such an honor to be with you today. Your website tells a story about your business. 
At Zebra Love Web Solutions, Millie and her team are going to make sure your website tells the story you want your customers to hear. Connect with Millie at zebralovewebsolutions.com to create the impression you want to make. Thank you for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. Are you ready to take the lead in your own life but need some support? Head over to womentakingthelead.com forward slash contact to introduce yourself. And to strengthen you on your leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining with me, and here's to your success.